Welcome to a tutorial video on React Native. In this video, I'm going to talk about working with Expo Snack, a web browser service that allows us to create React Native apps without using the command line tools and just typing things in a browser. So let me move over to that. So we see here a pretty simple example that this is some default code. And though it looks like a lot of code, it's just some default code. And then over here, a preview over here on the right hand side. So whenever I refresh this, when I revisit snack.expo.io, we notice it gives us a new random project name, in this case, Awkward Donuts, which is kind of funny. And if we refresh it again, Adequate Pastry, that's kind of a funny one. And it just gives us a random one every time. Cranky Raspberries is a good one to stop with. So I'm going to highlight three different things as we're looking across this interface. So similar to using editors like Visual Studio Code and other programs, we have our files open in our project view over here on the far left hand side. In the middle here, we have the code itself. And then different from using Visual Studio Code or another editor, in this case, we have the preview over here on the far right hand side. Over here in the preview, we have four different options, my device, iOS, Android, or web. In this video in particular, I'm just going to stick with web, although I'll talk about the other ones in other future videos. So we have a, some example code right here and a preview of it over here on the right hand side, as I mentioned. So I'm going to go ahead and change this code by selecting line 15 right here, and I'm going to change it. to some new code. And notice the update over here in the preview updated right after I did it. You may occasionally see device disconnected, device connected. That's usually when it decides it wants to do saving right here. So notice all change saved less than five seconds ago. Now it's 20 seconds ago. So it's keeping track of this. Notice the other thing that happened up here is the URL changed. It now says snack.expo.io slash at Videlis, which is my username, and then some characters after that. So these random characters represent this new random default project that was created. The reason why it's using this is because I haven't saved anything yet. So it will keep track of this in the browser, but if you were to close the browser, it would erase the project. To save the project to your profile, you have to click the big save button. So two things need to happen when you're using Snack uh, Expo or Expo Snacks. First thing, you have to create an account. I highly recommend using the community or the free version unless you are an advanced developer working for a company that would pay for the developer account. Using the community or the free account is the highly recommended way, especially when starting React Native. And then if you if you end up working at a company that needs to use it, you can use the higher end uh, professional or developer account. So starting creating an account using the community or free version. And then once you have an account, of, of course, logging in. And I'm already logged in here. So again, clicking this big old save button. When I do that, two things are going to happen. The first is going to say, hey, what do you want to call this project? So click save. There it goes. And then it said, hey, and then I accidentally clicked out of it. So it saved it as cranky raspberries, which is totally fine. It says, hey, this is now saved to your profile, which means you can now link out. And I'm going to close this. And notice up here it updated this to cranky raspberries, which is not what I wanted. So I'm going to go ahead and click right here and rename this. And then I'm going to click out of this and I'm going to click save again. And then notice it gave me the same little message. It says, Hey, this is now saved to your profile. If I click out of it, notice it updated the URL. So whatever we name it here, when we go to save, it will also save it as part of the URL, which means that we can then submit this URL to other people or for assignments or for grading or for whatever, showing off if we want to. Notice it also keeps track of when it was saved half a minute ago. And we of course can revert to previous saves. It also keeps a version control built into this. So, okay. I wrote some new code right here on line 15 and it updated over here. I actually don't want this thing over here, this local file thing message. So right here, 17 through 19, I'm going to select and then just delete. 
And in fact, notice as soon as I stopped typing, it updated over here and removed it for us. So what actually was going on? Well, it was importing card line nine and then using it with uh, asset example line six up here. Asset example notice is another component stored in the components folder. So over here, open files, project, components, left click, asset example, left click. And that's what it showed right here. It said local files, blah, 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 which is what we saw. So notice it's following the same pattern. We want to create new components. We create them in the components folder. In this case, it was a relatively simple component. So it's just named asset example.js, but for more complex components, they could of course be in their own folders based on their own names. So over here, app.js, and I'm going to go ahead and take this out. And I'm also going to take out constants up here. And you'll notice right after I do it, a big old error happened. So what happened? It said, hey, I don't know what you mean. Constants is not defined when it attempted to load all of this. The reasons why it's not defined is because I took it out. So I'm going to go ahead and take out line 21 that used that. I don't need it anymore and give it just a second and it updated. So whenever an error happens, it's gonna throw some red messages up and it's in the preview, usually in the bottom as well. And it's gonna say, hey, I don't know what you mean or you've created some type of error here. So this can be incredibly helpful for development. As we're developing things, it's going to immediately show if any er errors happen and attempt to give you some advice about perhaps fixing them. Now the advice may not always be as helpful as we want, but it's going to give you some advice about how to fix things. So the other thing I want to highlight here is what if I wanted to use a different NPM module? So this is an example of one, React Native Paper, here, here in line five. What if I actually want to use React Native Elements? So I'm going to change the word paper to elements and then pause. It said, hey, now you've got another error. I don't know what you're talking about because React Native Elements is not part of this project. However, there's a very simple way to fix this. I want to add React Native Elements. One of the ways to do it is through this, create an error, and then down here at the bottom in the footer, it says, hey, this is not defined in dependencies. Do you want to add it? Right here, add dependency, this link. I'm gonna go ahead and click that. We'll give it just a second. And then notice it fixed it for us. So what exactly just happened? Well, it added it to the package.json file. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this so we can look at it. It added it as a dependency, React Native Elements, right here, took, took care of it for us, perfect. So I'm gonna come back over here, and now I've still got card to use if I want. So outside of text, we now can use card as part of React Native Elements. Notice the example of a card right here, some text right here. So using Expo Snack is, is pretty useful, but there's sort of two key things we need to always remember. The first of which is we have to have an account. You have to create an account in order to save any of the code. The second is while the code will be saved in the browser, whenever we want to do something else with it, that is part of, make of it that is, use it as part of a portfolio, submit it as part of grading, show it off to our friends. We need to make sure we save. So clicking save will move it from saving in the browser to saving as part of the profile. So we need to make sure we always do that at least once. So clicking out of this, we see it saved. And then if I wanted to show off to my friends or submit for a grade or any other thing I wanted to use, I now have this link right here that would send people right back to this project, showing them all of the code. And of course, showing them over here, the web preview of that code running. And so somebody would be able to know very quickly, hey, this is this awesome code they created. And hey, this is how it looks amazing right over here in the preview using web on the right hand side. So again, as a quick review, just like using other editors like Visual Studio Code, we have our open files, our open project over here on the left-hand side. We have our code right here in the middle, and then we have our preview over here on the right-hand side. And again, as we're editing things, the preview will update. And if there's ever an error, if I accidentally forget something, it's going to throw up some messages and it's going to say, hey, I don't know what you're talking about, and then attempt to 
uh, give us some advice. And of course, as soon as we fix it, give it just a moment and it will update in the preview. So pretty useful. And it does the same live reloading that we saw when using React or using React Native using its web uh, experimental web options. But now it's all based on the browser and we can just develop React Native apps right here using Expo Snack. Again, remembering to create an account and always remembering to save. So we got the latest update and it's part of that profile. And of course, part of this link we can use to share with other people.